Today, I'm going to speedrun LEGO Star Wars 1 and 2 at the same time using GameCube WaveBird controllers, which can connect multiple consoles at once so the characters in both games do the exact same inputs at the same time. I got control first in LEGO Star Wars 1, so I was able to make it pretty far through the level before LEGO Star Wars 2 even began. I finished the level before barely finishing the first room of LEGO Star Wars 2, which only added to my worries about beating LEGO Star Wars 1 way too early. Anyway, I was able to use the cutscene time in 1 to play 2 uninterrupted, but I only got about halfway through the level before level Star Wars 1 dropped back in, which I then focused on again while neglecting poor LEGO Star Wars 2, which got so upset that it crashed. Uh, the Wii crashed. That wasn't supposed to happen. Having to reset was actually pretty alright, because the first time I didn't do the correct route. And this time I was doing a better job at keeping both games up to speed, until I failed this one out of bound skip in two and then had to reset the level, like three goddamn times. So while the three minute long cutscene played each time Obi-Wan got stuck on the floor, LEGO Star Wars 1 got pretty far ahead, and by the time it was finished with Junlin Waste in 2, I was already five levels into 1, which I'll say again, is significantly shorter than 2's lanky ass. So I was worried because what if I beat LEGO Star Wars 1 while Luke's still farting around on Endor? This game isn't that interesting to make a video about, as some of my longtime viewers may be aware, so from here on out, I made it a rule that I could only play LEGO Star Wars 1 during the cutscenes of LEGO Star Wars 2. Like on the first Death Star level of 2, the long cutscene let me get a few rooms into Mustafar, and when 2 became playable, it was time for my favorite skip in any of these games, where Obi-Wan jumps under the floor and through the door to the next room, one of the most iconic moments from the original film. The rest of the level is played normally, except you're obviously going 60 in a school zone. And once it was done, I finished up episode 3 and spurred it over to episode 2. Bet you didn't know that was a synonym for run. Thanks, thesaurus.com. Yo, what if we started calling speedruns speed spurts? Speedspurt.com would be a very different website. <laughs> As episode 2 began, I was entering one of the most difficult parts of the whole run on the Death Star. I had to get Han's chunky Lego ass through what speedrunners call Ripmore. Ripmore is this weird big platforming section where you have to scan your helmet up here without getting hit on the way from the dispenser to the panel. But even before you get there, you have to get Han through this hallway without getting shot because if you do his helmet comes off no and he loses his helmet immediately okay so this level is going to be hell so antics ensue and i really don't want to be here anymore but eventually i made it through and completed the level obi-wan threw harder than hungry box at super smash con 2023 and now he's flipping out of bounds on kamino dude the original lego star wars 1 has so many skips that aren't in complete saga why is no one running this game it is so sick yo lego star wars 2 is back but wait no what are you stop you fucking idiot it wasn't that big a deal because the cutscene wasn't that long but it still kind of sucked i fought jango fett and massacred millions of stormtroopers so now it's time for geonosis and hoth Geonosis is mainly platforming and wacky wizardry where R2-D2 uses the panel through some crates. Wow, you are so interesting and cool. Meanwhile on Hoth, I have to get this hidden red brick that makes droids unalive themselves at the push of a button. And to get said red brick, you gotta do these perfectly timed backflips with snow speeders to get out of bounds and inside the next room. This skip made me want to use self-destruct on myself, but eventually I did get it. Yes! Oh my god! Yes! Yes! Ah, oh, that took forever. And now there's another hard skip. Fuck, dude. Oh my god. It's okay though, this skip wasn't nearly as hard, and I got it pretty fast. Wait, let's go! The rest of the Battle of Hoth was easy, and so was saving Obi-Wan. I actually played these next two levels pretty in sync, but of course the LEGO Star Wars 1 level was shorter, and Gunship Cavalry is famously the worst level in any Star Wars game. However, because this is an auto scroll that sets you back to a checkpoint when you die, it gave me a lot of time to get LEGO Star Wars 2 caught up. Also, somehow I got it stuck on the pause screen, so it was nice to not have to listen to... I jumped out of Empire, bought the self-destruct red brick, and jumped into the beginning of episode 6, which had a pretty long cutscene, letting me progress in Gunship Cavalry. We're gonna skip over the next levels in both games, because they're both boring. I couldn't figure out the out-of-bounds in either, which just makes them normal, and as normal levels, they're both really boring. I already said that! But now that episode 2 is over, I only have 5 levels left in LEGO Star Wars 1, while LEGO Star Wars 2 still has 9. This is concerning, because I think episode 1 is the shortest episode in either game, and episode 5 is the longest. But we're not there yet. For the most part, the beginning of 6-2 is normal, and at the end, where you usually supposed to use a cannon to blow up these targets, I could use the self-destruct from the extra earlier and blow them up using R2-D2. And in 1-2, I got this jump that I've never been able to do, not even in practice. So, you know, look at it. It's cool. Wait, yo, yo, am I going to get it? Yo, that was sick. I've never been able to do that before. Yo! The ending of the Naboo level perfectly led into the speeder chase in 6. By putting both speeders in this corner, they'll stack on top of each other, and if you position them right and do a backflip at the perfect time, you can jump over the wall, skipping the speeder chase completely. The rest of the level is just the same as normal, but optimized using 1P2C, which is a technique I've been using throughout the run, where you control both characters at the same time using two controllers, which I guess makes the title a lie. But each controller is still tied to a different character, so the second controller still controls only player 2, but both player 2s. By the way, this setup required two wave 
upgrades and four receivers. Uh, that wasn't cheap. Please subscribe. The next level in LEGO Star Wars 1 is just played normal but fast. Except for this one out of bounds skip that I think I saw them argue about in the Discord if it even saves time at all. And I actually finished the level before the cutscene of LEGO Star Wars 2 finished. Hooray, we're almost done with LEGO Star Wars 1. Fuck! But actually, it's okay. In the pod racing level, you need to be holding A to move. So I can't really play the pod racing level at all while playing LEGO Star Wars 2. So cool, there's a skip on Endor called Tractor Skip or something where you ride a fucking tractor and jump over these walls. But I dropped the ball like I dropped these balls in your mouth. Aside from C-3PO explosions, the rest of the level's boring. You don't want to see it. And oh, hey, what's up, pod racing? Being stuck on this level was actually perfect because I had just enough time to complete one section of the race before moving on to LEGO Star Wars 2. In the Emperor fight, there's a skip called Ultra Kill where you push Palps down a hole and he dies. In Complete Saga, this is pretty easy even for someone who sucks like me, because you can push him by attacking him, and he'll block so he doesn't take damage. Because if he does, he'll jump back to his throne. But I don't think you can do that in LEGO Star Wars 2, and I couldn't push him back normally because I suck, so fine, I'll just fight him normally, which isn't worth talking about either. And neither is the next level. And neither is the next level, and oh wow, we're on Dagobah now, and also the pod racing level is still going. Dagobah has some wacky skips at the beginning, like R2 flying over this bush, fucking crazy, I know, and hut skip, where you stand on this rock, which warps R2 over here for some reason, who you can then switch to and skip training with Yoda. Then you fight Vader, who is you, uh, what could this mean? Oh, lift the X-Wing, and that's the level. The transition from Dagobah to Cloud City let me finish the pod race, and now both games are pretty caught up with each other, with only two levels left each. First room of Darth Vader, fly out of bounds, self-destruct the door, and use the panel. First room of Theed, run forward, force up the stairs, and hit the R2 panel. Second room of Vader, beat his asthmatic ass. Second room of Theed, kill robots, another R2 panel. The third level of both games was kind of awkward because I had to run in opposite directions. It was like tug of war. Wow. <laughs> Once both games were on the fourth room, is where it really got messy. I low-key totally forgot how to do this part of the Vader fight optimally, and trying to do both levels in sync made it a lot harder. I made it through the episode 1 room first, good job LEGO Star Wars for being ahead for the first time ever, and after finishing the room in Empire, I got the episode 1 gang to the hangar pretty quickly and got the game stuck in the menu again, so I just finished the Vader level before Theed. And now we're on the last level of both games. Cloud City came in a little before Darth Maul, which let me get to the mid-level cutscene right when LEGO Star Wars 1 dropped in. Lamb drop time, let's go! For some reason, there's this little area underneath this lamp that you can use to teleport to the top of the lamp and then jump across the gap. Lamp jumping back to Empire, we have this weird skip where Lando jumps under the floor and runs under the door. Haha, <laughs> that rhymed. <laughs> but I really suck at this jump, so I had to do the level the old-fashioned way where you assemble a C-3PO poly bag. Next room, you shoot a bunch of guys and clip R2 out of bounds so he can teleport his friends to the control room. Catching up with LEGO Star Wars, we're on the final room of the game, at least because I cut out a couple rooms because they were boring as hell. After activating the bridge and going through the smoke as R2, Empire is also on its final room. So after fighting Maul, and clearing the pad of stormtroopers, I was able to end both games at nearly the same time, and at a final time of 3 hours, 51 minutes, and 49 seconds and 50 milliseconds, which is a pretty atrocious time for both games and both games combined. But hey, it was only 20 minutes more than my first ever run of Complete Saga, so I'm basically just as fast playing both at once, if your mind is a gymnast like mine. Anyway, that's it. Goodbye. This whole thing has, is like sort of a test, because I want to see if I can do this with Tears of the Kingdom Breath of the Wild later.